In this video, we're going to look at two techniques. The first is how to display non-printing formatting marks, and the second is how to select text. So the first technique is about non-printing format marks. Before I show you that, we need some text on the screen, and rather than do lots of typing, I'm going to show you a little technique that can really help. In a new blank document, if we just type this little command, it's equal sign, rand, R-A-N-D, open brackets, 5 comma 5, close brackets. So that's equals rand, 5 comma 5, close brackets. The numbers aren't important. You can use any numbers you like. Basically, that is going to give me five paragraphs of text, and each paragraph of text will have five sentences in that paragraph. So you can see you can change the numbers in there to suit yourself. Press the Enter key, and there's my five paragraphs of text. One, two, three, four, and five. And each one's got five sentences of random text in. That makes life nice and easy for us to work with. OK. So the first skill is how to display non-printing formatting marks. If you have a look at the text on the screen, I'll just zoom in a little bit for you, you'll see that we've got simple text, a bit of punctuation, and nothing else. So there is nothing between this dot, the full stop after dog, and the letter T. The letter T, sorry. I'm used to working with children. The letter T. There's nothing there. And there's nothing after the end of this full stop before the beginning of the next paragraph. Wrong. There is something there. There is a non-printing formatting mark. We can use this icon on the toolbar to switch on or show those formatting marks. It's a toggle switch. Clicking it once shows them. Clicking it again hides them. If I click that once now, what you should be able to see on the screen are these paragraph marks. You get a paragraph mark every time you press the Enter key. It tells the computer to start a new paragraph. Otherwise, how would it know? You should also be able to see some dots. One dot between each word and two after each full stop. If you remember, in the last lesson I said one space between each word and either one or two spaces after punctuation. Those dots denote the space bar. Switching them on and off so we can see them. But what benefit? It really helps you when you're doing your typing. I'm just got to scroll to the bottom of the of the text and insert some more non-printing um, paragraph marks. You'll be able to see that every time I press the Enter key, I get a new paragraph mark. Every time I press the space bar, I get a new dot. That's because I'm displaying them. If I switch them off, you can't see those spaces, but they are still there. Enter key. Some more paragraph mark, uh, some, sorry, some more formatting marks that you might see when you switch this feature on. When I press the tab key on the keyboard, I get an arrow. Again, switching that off, you can't see them. Switching it on, you can see them. Enter key, tab key, enter key, tab key. Another one you might see is a manual line, line break. So there's lots of different things that you can switch on, sorry, not switch on, you can see when you switch on the show formatting marks. Hide them, show them. The benefit of this is when you come to start adding things to your document. So say, for example, I want to add some more text here and start my typing again. Oh, it's not coming in the middle. So it's not coming at the edge of the, of the text. It's not coming at my left margin. It's automatically typing so far across the screen. What on earth can I do? You pull your hair out thinking what's gone wrong. Don't pull your hair out. 
switch on show hide. When things aren't going as you expect them, switch that feature on, see what's getting in the way. That is why I can't put text at the beginning of my uh, left margin, because these tab marks are forcing it to the right. Now in future lessons we'll talk more about these tab marks. Just for now, know that we can switch that feature on and off and see the formatting marks. OK, selecting text next. You're probably familiar with clicking and dragging to select text. Most people do it that way, but it's really not an efficient way because things can go wrong, especially when you're not used to using a mouse particularly. Um, if you click and drag to select the text and don't quite get as much as you want, and think, oh, well, I'll do it again. So you click and drag again. Oh, you've moved the text by mistake. That's why clicking and dragging is not a good technique to use. There are a few techniques that we can use. Let's have a look at those now. The first one is if you want to select the word jumps, for example, simple point to it and double click the left mouse button and the word is selected. Point to any word, double click, the word is selected. Double click, the word is selected. If you triple click, that's three left mouse button clicks anywhere inside a paragraph and it selects the whole paragraph. That's one, two, three, selects the paragraph. One, two, three, selects the whole paragraph. One, two, selects the word. You can also hold down the control key and click inside a sentence and it selects that sentence for you. That's holding down the control key, click the sentence and it selects a whole sentence. Other things we can do are in this margin area. Notice when I move to the margin, my mouse cursor changes from an eye beam to an arrow. When you've got that arrow, you can use these selection techniques. Single click selects the whole line. Double click selects the paragraph. Single click line, double click paragraph. You can also do a triple click and that selects the whole document. So that's a single click, double click, triple click. You can also select the whole document by using edit and drop down to select all. Just before I click there, notice there's a short keyboard shortcut there, control A. So there's three ways to select the whole document. You could do control and A, you could do edit, select all, or you can do a triple click in the margin. So there's a few selection techniques there for you. Have a practice with them. Get used to using those rather than clicking and dragging. Clicking and dragging can go wrong and is fiddly. Finally, when you click and drag or you use any technique for selecting text, people often call that highlighting text. It is not highlighting. There's a separate tool for highlighting. That is not it. Highlighting is using like a yellow highlighter pen to add and draw attention to the text. This is selecting text. 